Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. She actually has a podcast on our network, and she is part of our podcast community. And she is the founder of BC and Associates Marketing. And she's here today to talk about clarity and what that means in the marketing world and how that could affect so many people who are entrepreneurs and have businesses. So I'm really excited for her to come on the show and tell us a little about clarity. Before our on our episode before, we talked about the why. So today we're going to talk about clarity. And if you haven't heard about the why, I suggest you go back to her last episode and listen to it because it's a great episode and it'll teach you a lot of things. So Beverly, I'm so glad you're on the show today. Explain to people what clarity means when it comes to marketing. Thank you so much, Stacey. I am so excited to be back and to continue this conversation. I am a total nerd when it comes to all of this stuff. And you give me 20 minutes and hopefully I can stay succinct and not go too far. <laughs> <Tell the best. laughs> yeah, you're right. Last time we talked about why and how it fuels everything in your business. It's about you, you know, the purpose of everything. But today, like you said, we're going to talk about the purpose, the bringing that purpose to life through clarity and getting really laser focused on who you are, who you serve, and how to create messaging that really resonates with the dream clients. Not just any client, but your dream clients. Right. So your why is the spark that fuels your passion. It's what keeps you going. But clarity is the fuel that keeps the spark alive. Yeah. Without clarity, your why can feel like it's stuck. <laughs> I'm come from Detroit, so it's stuck in neutral. It's not driving anywhere. It's not going backwards, but you're just kind of sitting there spinning your wheels, right? You can't get yes. anywhere. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> here's how they connect. Clarity is, the, is what bridges your passion with your audience. It helps you show up in a way that feels super authentic to who you are. It's like the word of, I feel like authenticity is like the word of 2024. Yeah. While making it super easy for your ideal clients, the perfect people that you want you want to buy from you to see how you can help them. Right. So I have a story. Can I share a story? Oh, sure. I'd love okay. to. Okay. So I have a client. Her name is Angel. She's an art therapist who helps women who are going through um, like the major life changes, like divorce, empty nesting. Um, big career changes, maybe from even corporate life to their own business. Right. She helps them find clarity and healing through creative self-expression. So through art, her why was deeply rooted in a, empowering women to have confidence, right. So that they could do these life changes. Right. And be empowered, not necessarily feel lost in that process. Yeah. But her messaging, it was all over the place. Like she was offering kids art parties and corporate team building workshops and general art classes. And those people, those women that were in transition, they couldn't see how she could help them. Right. So frankly, Angel was excited about helping, but she wasn't confident to talk about her work. Not because she didn't love what she was doing, but she wasn't clear. Yes. So together, her and I sat down <clears throat> We and we created a simplified three-step program for her, like very clear service offerings that support that mission of supporting those women that are in transition. And suddenly, once we had that clear messaging and that really clear path, Angel felt confident. She was able to share and talk about what she did, who she served, how they do it, what the next step was. And all of a sudden, women started coming to her, they felt seen. Yeah. Angel said for the first time, she could see what was really possible for her business. That is the magic of clarity. It aligns your purpose with your message and helps you become, I like to say, a magnet for clients yeah. mm -hmm. that you are specifically meant to serve. I think so many people, you know, when you ask them what is their message, they're all over the board because they have, you know, they could do a little of this, they little of that. Yeah. And, you know, so when you ask them in, in less than one sentence, just a few words, mm -hmm. you know, what do you do? Who do you represent? And they, they have a hard time doing that. You know, it, it's such a common trap though. We all yeah. want to, I, I was there I was, before this, we started recording. I said, I was there for 10 years. I'm a marketer. Yes. I know better. Right. No better. Yeah. <clears throat> but I was saying yes to every request and to every client. And I was making really good money doing it. Right. 
But the results were I was feeling stressed and far overstretched in areas that I had no business doing marketing in. Yes. So when you try to be everything to everyone, you dilute your magic. Yes. And you create, I think, undue, unnecessary stress for yourself. So we were talking earlier. I said, it's like, it's like, um, I have a metaphor. It's like a beam of sunlight um, and you have a magnifying glass and that sunlight is, is passing through, through it. And when that beam is exactly in the center, it can start a fire because it's so laser focused, right? But if it's scattered, if it's even remotely off the center, it can maybe make you feel warm underneath, but it's yeah. not doing any kind of activity. And that's what happens when the brand message isn't clear. Yeah. So clarity can really help um, simplify in so many powerful ways to that messaging and that laser focus for your business. And I think, I think we all at some point <clears throat> in our career, we were all guilty of that because it, it's like, we tried to do it all. And then yeah. try to do it all moment, you know, you end up, like you said, putting more stress on yourself and then you get lost in who you are and what you Very represent. Much. Because you're Very all much. over the board and you, yes, you can make a lot of money. You're doing all these things, but you know, a lot of people are getting confused too, because they are seeing you in all these different areas and they're like, who is this person? What do they right. represent? You know, am I part of their audience or am I not? Because I see them doing this, but yet they're doing this and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then you don't, you attract all these different people. And you're not attracting the cluster of the right audience to you. Mm -hmm. And that's where your business will thrive is the majority. And I think people, you know, they, they kind of lose themselves. And, and that's why in clarity is so important. Now, what, what are the actionable steps? What are some of the steps that we can take to actually start to develop clarity in our business? So I think we need to start with like the three ways that we can get clear and then we can like talk about the, some of the steps. So the three yeah. things that I think are really important that every every business owner must understand is defining who you serve. This is your niche. Yes. And here's the truth. When you're not clear about who you serve, you try to serve everyone, right? Yes. But when you try to serve everyone, your message doesn't connect with absolutely anyone. Yes. So the first step is to ask yourself, who is my dream client? Right. Be really specific. So an example I say um, all the time is if you're like a wellness coach or you work in coaching, don't just say, I help people get healthy. Right. Maybe your focus is on busy moms who are struggling to regain their energy or women over 40 navigating menopause. Yeah. <laughs> The clearer you are with the audience, the easier it becomes to create messaging that resonates directly with them. Yeah. As you can imagine, my message to new moms versus the message to 40-year-olds who are going through menopause, <laughs> a little bit different, right? A little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> right. So um, it's super important. It's really important. People don't think about it that way. They think that, oh, I just have to say this thing and, and reach as many people. But even if... Even if there's like only a thousand people in that one little niche, that's enough to keep you busy. So yeah. don't think that you're limiting yourself. You are actually creating the perfect pocket for your business to sit in. Right. One of my favorite clients, her name is Michelle. She runs a bookkeeping business and um, I'm a creative person. So bookkeeping is like, it makes my head hurt. But <clears throat> when she came to me, she was offering every single service imaginable. She was offering tax prep and payroll and bookkeeping and budgeting, you name it. She was doing it. Yeah. She had clients from local coffee shops to large construction companies, but she didn't feel aligned or excited about her work. Mm. She was doing everything for everyone. Right. And she was good at it. It wasn't that she wasn't good at it, but as yeah. we dug into her business, we found this incredible buried gem on her about us page. It said, not your father's bookkeeper. It was quirky. It was bold. And it was yeah. completely Michelle. <laughs> but she wasn't leading with that. So yeah. when we brought that tagline to the forefront, it became the filter for everything, for her clients. for And really, she we learned that like her clients are like creative, offbeat entrepreneurs, like tattoo artists and roller rink owners. Yeah. These were the people who loved her bold personality and her fresh approach to bookkeeping. So we took that not your father's bookkeeper. <laughs> and when we find that message and really, really, really focus and suddenly everything clicked, she started showing yeah. up as this creative bookkeeper 
for creative people. And, you know, the thing that was that. awesome was Michelle told me this clarity has helped her make better decisions in every aspect of her business. And the entire team is on board, too, because her employees now understand the why with clarity and yes. who and all of that. So, um, you know, she her dream clients started to show up and now she's booked and she's working with people that she totally digs. And she's absolutely loving her business again, which that to me is like the best thing ever as the marketer who's involved in that is I want her to really love what she does so that the yes. people that she helps to serve can love what they do. So it's like the best of all the worlds. Um, so that, that's the really the, the first thing is define who you serve and who you want to serve those ideal clients that you love. I oftentimes say that you can easily create a list of all your favorite clients, the people who you're excited to talk to, not the ones where they, you see their name on the caller ID and you're like, mm, <laughs> no. The people who you absolutely love, the people who trust you, the people who have had the biggest transformation because the process went so well for yeah. you, mm -hmm. those are the people you want to write down. Then you want to start talking about <clears throat> all the commonalities that they have. Mm -hmm. And that will help you understand who your niche is. So maybe there's an industry specific. Maybe there's a type of entrepreneur. Maybe there's an age range. Or maybe there's the type of business that they have. There's there's going to be some commonalities. Yeah. Or maybe it's their pain point that is the most connective. But there's going you're going to find some things that are the same with all those favorites. Yeah. And that's who you want to serve. Because first, you know you can do it because you have done it. You have customers who love you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you also know, like, you love them too. So every day is going to be a driver versus a drainer if you're working with people who actually love what you do and you love serving them. So it becomes this amazing, magical, like, you just keep feeding this magical thing by doing that, working with people that you love yeah. and doing what you love. So super important. So that comes to the second part. It clarifies the problem that you serve, that, that you solve. So once you know who you're serving, the next step is to understand their pain points. Right. What are they struggling with? What keeps them up at night? What are they scared of? Think about their fears, their worries, the things they might not even say out loud. Yeah. So for example, Michelle's creative entrepreneur clients were stressed and overwhelmed by finances. All they wanted to do was be cool. You know, they wanted to do their thing. They didn't want to, I'm the same way. I don't want to worry about my books, right? right. I just want to do my creative thing. Yeah. And so um, they didn't want to deal with the spreadsheets. Like, you put a spreadsheet in front of me and I'm going to go cross-eyed. Like, I love the story that it tells at the end, but I don't want to look at all the numbers. Yeah. I want to focus on what I'd love to do. And so did her clients. So their biggest pain point wasn't just numbers. It was this fear of being stuck in the numbers, like this yeah. chaos that it creates, because I don't know what the story it tells. Like I can put all the numbers in there and take all the time. But if I don't understand what the possibilities are for me or how I'm growing or what matters, where should I be focusing my attention to get the most profit or whatever the case is? Exactly. Then I'm just stuck in like this numbers. Can I say H-E-L-L? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so it, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I feel like it becomes almost miserable in the, in that, because every time I do that task and I'm just, it's a drainer. Yeah. So she, she clearly understood the problem her audience was facing and she created messages that feel felt like a lifeline or like a, a life preserver, right? Like, let yeah. me throw this to you. I can take care of this yeah. and make it all tell a story so that, you know, the best next step for your business. Exactly. So, um, when your clients should read every marketing piece that you have, your website, your social media, or hear the message and think, that's me. They understand what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. I want somebody like that to work with. I want to hire that person. Mm -hmm. So when she says, I help creative people focus on their passions. Yeah. You know, it, it helps me see, oh, I want to do that. So she's going to take care of that for me. And then the last thing is that it you should always highlight the transformation that you deliver, whatever that looks like for you. So right. clarity allows you to paint this really vivid picture of the transformation your clients will experience when they work with you. Right. This is where you tap into those dreams, those aspirations. You want to ask yourself things like, what does life look like for your clients after they've worked for you? Yeah. How do they feel? What have they gained? So have they gained yes. confidence? Have they gained clarity? Have they gained, what? what is it they've gained 
that that happened before from the before to the after of working with you. So right. as you're looking at that list of clients, what problems did you solve for them? What did they gain? What was that transformation look like? And like for Michelle, going back to the bookkeeper, it's the transformation was freedom and clarity. They finally felt in control of their finances and they weren't stressed about it, right? right. Like they didn't have to stress about it. And for Angel, the art therapist, it was about finding healing and confidence through the artistic process of self-expression and enabling, enabling to handle, and they're able to handle the life transition with more grace, right? Yeah. And not feel stuck, right. which is amazing. So when you really focus on the outcome, uh, Stacey, you help, you can help clients envision their success and make it so much easier for them to say, hello, I want that. I'm raising my hand. <laughs> I signed yeah. up for that process, right? So I think the other thing that's like people oftentimes when I talk about clarity, they think of like, oh, I'm limiting myself or I'm like putting myself in a box. It doesn't limit, limit you. I think it actually liberates you. Yeah. It allows you to really, really focus on the clients you're most passionate about serving and helps them see why you're the best person to help them. It's like um, a path. It's like a direct path that you can, you can put them on that, mm -hmm. that um, helps them um, clear away from their struggles and puts them to the success. Like it helps, like you can go this way and you can still continue with your struggles and do all the things. But if you go this way, yeah, I'm here and I'm the guide. I'm going to help you cross over to that, whatever that looks like for your business. Right. Plus we were talking about this earlier when you network and when you are out and about, you want to be known for something. Right. And it's not yeah. just like bookkeeping because I mean that every, there's a lot of bookkeepers out there. This helps people really understand who you serve and the outcome you have. Yes. So they can provide the right referrals for you. So again, you're working with those people that you absolutely love. You're not just getting random referrals. You're getting the right referrals. Yes. And everyone knows, oh my gosh, like referrals are the best marketing you could ever have. Like they're the, the mm -hmm. low hanging fruit, the cheapest. If you do a good job, like this is like, like where the bread and butter is. Right. So, um, when they hear somebody who's struggling with your particular thing that they know you, that they know is a pain point for your particular audience, you'll be the first person they think of and they'll send you those right kind of referrals that will, that will help build your business. I think, you know, that is what you said is so powerful. And that is one of the things that I always hear also from people is that they're afraid that if they really you know, start to create yeah. clarity, they are limited in themselves. And then they're afraid that they're not going to be as successful because now they limit themselves to one yeah. specific, you know, niche or one specific area. They're like, oh my God, I'm, what about all those other people that might want me, you know? Yeah. And, and they start to get like a little iffy about it. And, you know, but it doesn't work that way. Can you explain to them, you know, a little bit more in depth why it's so important to have that, that clarity, why it's so important to, you know, have that specific niche and that you're not limited in yourself? No. So I was really scared of this. Like after doing this for 10 years and being everything to everyone and really not serving anyone, I was yeah. really scared to do this process, Stacey. I thought that I was taking money off the table. I thought I was doing those things. Um, but what started to happen as I got clearer and clearer is instead of waking up at 3 a.m. stressed out about doing that thing that I didn't know how to do because I said yes, because I had to figure that out then, right? Like I didn't have a process yeah. or a system for it. Right. Or the right team member even to handle it because maybe it was a a concept like we don't. So, for example, we don't do Google ads. Right. We're branding and digital marketing, but we don't do Google ads. We do websites. We do messagings and email newsletters and other things that we don't necessarily do Google ads. So we were trying to figure it out to be that person for them. We took classes and hours, hours of work to create yeah. a system and a process for this. And all to find out that we don't really even like that part of the work. Yeah. And so like it took us that process to realize like this isn't this isn't for us. Like it's if anybody asked for a Google ad, I was like, oh, I literally was like, oh. <laughs> okay, sure. Like I, I, my insides, I was just like kind of sick to my stomach about it. Cause I yeah. just knew we weren't doing a great of a job. Like we could do it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the thing that we did the best. And I love being excellent. So it was really hard for me to, to, to say no, but it was really hard for me to say yes, even because yeah. 
it wasn't the thing that we did the best. So now I I took a lot of time to get clear and I started to remove the things that I went about before. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, who can do this better than me and is excited at the level that I am about branding and digital marketing yeah. that can be a great partner? Right. And so I have developed out my partnerships and collaborations to fill roles with people who I trust and I know can handle the work. And it's the thing that makes them so excited. Like the bookkeeper who loves bookkeeping and I don't like it. Like I need people who love bookkeeping to do yeah. my books, right? Exactly. I can do them. Is it going to be the best? No, I'll, I'll do them, but it's not going to, it's not going to produce the result that having somebody who lives and breathes and loves bookkeeping will do. Right. So I know now I went from 3 a.m. stress wake up calls or wake ups or whatever, panicking over having to learn how to do Google ads <laughs> To waking up at 3 a.m. with so many ideas of how to do what we do way better. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm laser focused, I can focus on the areas that I know we do well and I can improve my mindset around it. I can improve my skill set around it and I can improve my systems around it. Right. And knowing it's only like these few things now makes it really doable to be excellent in those areas and to right. hire the right people to be, to, to be on the teams for those things. Yeah. So now that gives me so much more freedom in my headspace, even mm -hmm. to like come up with the ideas, to be creative for my clients, to yeah. give them the attention they deserve because I'm not right. stressed out about this other thing that I have to figure out. That's going to take me way longer than it would somebody who does it for a living and loves it. Yeah. And I have found, and I, I've been there, so I've, you know, like, this is very real to me. And very recently, I've been there. Um, now that I'm really clear, my business is taking off. So it's, clarity has allowed me the space to really do what we do well, but also to allow other people to know what we do and do well and to give us the referrals and grow the business because they know exactly who we serve, the problem that we solve, and what will happen at the end of the day when they work with us. So okay. it, it, it is super scary. I really did think, oh my gosh, like what if we don't do Google ads? What if we don't do that? But I got, I got creative about how I'm going to fulfill that. And I don't need to make money on everything. Yeah. There's a plenty of business out there and there are plenty of really smart people and actually collaborating is way more fun because sometimes working on this stuff by ourselves can get really lonely and having those collaboration partners and working each other's network as well yeah. has just grown my business in really fun, exciting ways. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, and I was in the same boat as you. I was like for for 10 years, I was in the same situation. And I don't even do Google ads because I found that going and doing it the way you just mentioned works a lot more efficiently and yeah. the results when you combine, you know, social networking and you combine mm -hmm. doing the right type of ads on social yeah. network, and then you are able to make referrals and you're able to mm -hmm. connect with others, you actually grow your business a lot faster, especially with the referrals, you know, and yeah. get those referrals come from that audience that from, and using the clarity, you know, figuring out mm -hmm. your why and then figuring out your clarity and then going after that group, you could actually grow your business within six months. You could actually find your business easily. I mean, even three months, like even three months, yeah, it will turn around. And not to mention, you'll just be a better person to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you won't be stressed out all the time. You'll be kind. I have more patience for my family, like all of it. Like it, I'm better with my clients. Like there's so many ancillary results. The benefits from this are just, it's, it's like kind of mind boggling when you get yeah. really clear about things. People are scared to take these three steps, you know? I tell everybody, even on this podcast, the listeners, you could pause right now and you could do these three steps or you can wait till the episode is over. But taking the time just to write this down and get clear and to share it with your team. Yeah. And maybe looking at your um, website, doing mm -hmm. a little bit of an audit um, yeah. in your social media. Are we clear with this? In the first three seconds when you come to our website, does do we know who we're serving? Yes. Do we know what their what like what their pain points are and their aspirations? Are we saying that? Right. And are we saying the the transformation that can happen? Right. Like, are we saying that in the first three seconds? Do they know when they first arrive that we are serving them? We can help solve the problems that they're having and what the end looks like for them. Does, yeah. Is are we saying that? Because I I can probably bet most people it's not. Yes. 
I, it's not. And it's sad because I, I've seen so many people, and I told you this before the show, I've had so many clients that have such great products and services and they're doing such amazing things, Yes. but they're not marketing or they're not, they're not marketing the right way. And then they're, they're frustrated because Yep. they're not getting these results. And then some of them think because they do one or two little things that, you know, Yeah. thousand people are supposed to come their way, but it, it's a process. It's a, it's a process and it's being able to really, like you said, get your message across, you know, figure out Yep. why, why you're doing this and then figure out the clarity, you know, and figure out, you know, make it clear to your audience who you are what, and, you know, what, you know, and what you do, you know, Yeah. so they know it's for them or they know it's not for them. Immediately in those first few seconds, because people don't have time anymore to No, do that. no. So if, if our listeners right now want to do something right now, this is what I would say. There's three steps that they could easily do to create some clarity. But then after the clarity, there's some consistency and persistency we've talked about. Like you have to be consistent in the messaging and you have to be really persistent. It doesn't happen overnight. There's no magic marketing bullet that will make everything perfect. And all of a sudden you'll be this huge business. Yes. Um, I wish I would be very rich if that was the case. <laughs> but, you know, um, but it really is about um, clarity, consistency, and persistency. So step one, write out your favorite clients. Do that right now. You can take out a piece of paper and write them out. Mm Write out their name, a short description, maybe something like Sarah, the busy mom who got her confidence back, or James, -hmm. Yeah. the photographer who found his niche. And then why you loved working with them. Were they open to your guidance? Did they challenge you in the best way? Like Yeah. that's something too. I have some clients who are really great because we are good partners because we trust each other and challenge each other to get to the best ideas. Um, and then what's the transformation that they experienced? How did your work change their life or their business? Did they gain Right. clarity, confidence, or achieve some major goal? And then step two, identify those pain points and those aspirations. This is where you have to dig deeper and ask yourself questions like, What are their struggles? What are they afraid of? What keeps them up at night? So for example, like Michelle, going back to the bookkeeper, her creative clients were worried about staying organized and financially stable so they could still run their businesses. Yeah. Right. And Angel's clients felt lost and they were stuck in these transitions that made them feel miserable. Right. These are the things that every night when they went to bed, they were worried about, can I pay my bills tomorrow? Can Yeah. I, can I, can I get up tomorrow and do this thing that I have to do? Like this divorce Yeah. thing. How am I going to talk to the children? How am I, they're, they're stuck in these transitions that are really difficult for people to navigate. Yeah. And then look at what do they want out of it all? What are those aspirations? What are they dreaming of achieving? Are they wanting to get open a second location, a second roller rink or a second Right. tattoo parlor? And what does the after picture look like? Like they feel Right. confident. They feel like they've made the best choices possible. They know they did the right thing. Like things, Yeah. like things that really matter for those women in transition, right? So for Michelle, it's freedom, time to focus on their work without stressing over finances. It's really simple, but that is what they're stressing out about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then Angel's clients, they wanted clarity, but they also wanted healing, And a chance Right. to embrace the next chapter of their lives Yes. with true confidence, knowing Yeah. that they're making the best decisions. So those are the things that, that's the transformation. But then the last step is, so once you have who you serve, what the, what their fears and aspirations are is use this to shape your messaging. So don't just write this down and then don't do anything with it. <laughs> like, Right. please do something with it. Take everything and create one powerful sentence. So use this framework. This is the best thing. If you guys, if you can all do this today, it will be so powerful for you. Use the words. I help. And then between there, who you serve. So I help bold, purpose-driven entrepreneurs. That's me. Bold, purpose-driven entrepreneurs. Do. And then what you do. I help them awaken their brand magic. Something Mm -hmm. that I do. Right. So they can. And then the transformation. So they can find their unique opportunities and magnify their impact Yeah. Yes. is mine. So the people I work with want to impact the world in some way with kindness or wellness or those kinds of things. So Yeah. we want to magnify their Im impact so they can help the most people Right. possible because we want more kindness and wellness in the world. That's what we want. <laughs> so that's my example. For, for Angel, it's I help women in transition and transition. Find clarity and healing through creative self-expression to have the confidence to enter the next chapter of their lives. 100%. I love it.
Michelle is, I help bold creative entrepreneurs take control of their finances so they can focus on their passion. I love it. So when you clearly articulate who you serve, the problem that you solve and the transformation that you deliver, your audience will instantly see themselves in your messaging. I love it. That's so true. That's so true. And then they find their purpose. Yeah. That's so important. And that's like the biggest driver ever, right? Like, oh, 100%. When you, I mean, I'm f- almost 50 years old and, you know, the question of what are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I was just like, I'm going to be a marketer, right? Yeah. Like, that's just kind of what I said. But now I help bold, purpose-driven, heart-centered, you know, solopreneurs awaken their brand magic. Yeah. And I magnify their impact. Yes. Like that's such a big driver for me. And that's exactly why I do what I do, but I had to find the wording Mm -hmm. to really resonate with me that I also think resonates with my particular clientele. Yeah. But every day it's like, it's like a no brainer. Like this is, and and does this do this? Is that, does this speak to the bold heart centered purpose driven? Yes or no? Nope. Does it help get us closer to this? Nope. Nope. It's really clear now. Yeah. What, how our messaging, how our marketing should function. And if we do a a thing for the business. So it becomes the filter for all of our decision-making when we are really clear on this particular statement. Oh, And my team knows too. My team knows exactly who we serve. There's no question. Like everybody knows. So if we know, then our Mm -hmm. clients will know. If we don't know, then our clients will be confused. A hundred percent. We have to be clear so they are clear. So the clearer you can be, the be, it's really the foundation for every brand. It's what takes you from feeling, what am I going to do today? You know, that really feeling of being scattered and unsure. Yeah. To confident and connected yeah. to your business in a very different way. Right. And almost like um, in control yeah. of the next step. Like we, as business owners, we have a lot of things we have to get figure out. Yeah. And any place that we can c- capture some control in the process mm-hmm. <laughs> is really awesome. So this gives you a, a little bit of a different element of control in the process. I love it. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize on? Well, just really taking that time to write that list, that dream list of clients and the things that you've done for them and the things that make you happy, that bring you the most joy. Right. I think so many, I know so many entrepreneurs started a business to help people, whatever that looks like. They wanted to serve and do something for people. Yes. And this allows you to be super intentional. Yes. With what your business looks like and how you help people. Right. And guess what? It's our business. We yes. get to decide yes. how we run our businesses and who right. we serve and how we do that. Mm-hmm. But you have to decide. You yes. have to be the one to do the work so that you can create the business that you've always dreamed of. And this this exercise, while it seems it's three questions and you just have to take a little bit of time, it may even evolve a little bit. I've been tweaking mine just a little bit as well. Like I don't know yeah. if it ever fully stops. Um But this exercise will wrangle some of that in, in a way that it it will just, it kind of will change everything. Yeah. It'll just kind of change everything for you. And I love that for the people who do the exercise because this being a business owner is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. (laughs) So if we can give them some tools and ways to create some more excitement and passion and keep that spark alive, that why alive. Yeah. A hundred percent. Then we've done a good job today, Stacey. So that's really the reason that's really the big stuff. Take the time you're worth it. And, and you get to decide this is, this is a choice that you get to make for your business. So. Yes. A very exciting one. Now, if we had to take, like, can you explain to everybody some of the services that you provide. So, you know, you could take a moment to just go over that and where they could actually find you, the best places to find you. 
So we have three ways that you can work with us. The first way is a deep dive 90 minute conversation that really is there to uncover, you know, sometimes when you're in the business, Mm -hmm. you can't see the business. So we uncover your unique opportunities to grow your business in a way that's really in alignment with your vision and where you've been and where you want to go. We help you simplify your messaging. And then we also create a blueprint. So like the best next steps for the brand to feel really powerful and aligned with the vision and where you want to go. So that's the first way you work with us. That's called a brand spark. I love Mm -hmm. the idea of creating a little bit of magic together, that spark of inspiration that really does show you what is possible, right? What is possible for your brand? And then the second step is the brand ignites. So now we've created the spark. Let's you know, do it in a really intensive way and light it on, light it into a way that's really exciting for you. Yeah. So we will get all the things that you need to establish this new messaging and this new brand for yourself in alignment. So we will, you can create logos, we can develop messaging, we can do your content pillars, we can build your website, all the foundational pieces to ignite your brand so that you feel super confident with this new messaging and everything that you're doing. To go out and just conquer. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. And then the last one is Blaze, Brand Blaze. Do you see a theme here? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, It's once you, once you build it, you can't not continue. This is the consistency and persistency part. You have to keep feeding it. And so this is like your daily, your weekly, your monthly marketing activities, like social media posts, email marketing, things like that. We do that with the Brand Blaze service. So those are the three main ways you can work with us. And and this clarity piece that we're talking about today, if you're really ready to focus and you want a little bit of help, then I'd love to invite you to book a Brand Spark session with me so that you can get to that place where you feel really excited about your business and have that super clear focus so that you can light that fire, like that sunbeam on the magnifying glass, you can light the fire for your business as well. I love it. And where can they find you if they want to book a um, session with you? So I'm on all the socials as Beverly Cornell. I am married. So my last name is McGlynn. So you might see that as well. But BC and Asso- bcassociatesmarketing.com is our website. And that's all of our socials as well. So you can find us all over. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been an amazing podcast today. I love the information you shared with us today. And this is, I hope people were taking notes and if they didn't let them go back and listen to it again, because you gave some powerful notes and I know they work because I do them myself and it helped me grow. Some of these things helped me like five, six 7x my business and it's really powerful so i think people really need to listen to these these um suggestions that you made and some of these tips and strategies you were talking about because they work and i am a testimonial to that so i really enjoyed that you came on the show today i'm very excited about our next podcast and thank you so much for showing up today and sharing this information you are amazing Thank you, Stacey. I really appreciate the the opportunity. And our next episode is going to be all about the power of storytelling. So I'm super excited to dive into that with you as well. So um, again, thank you. It's been so fun. I love this stuff. Oh, me too. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) I'm right with you, baby. (laughs) Well, you have a great day, Beverly, and I'll see you soon. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye.